Good morning, friends. Welcome to Christ Church in the Rose Garden for our second Rose Garden conversation. I'm Father Drew, and I'm grateful to be here today with Betsy Creeden, our junior warden. Betsy, it's great to see you. Good to see you, and in this beautiful garden. It's a good place yeah. today. How you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, it's not easy being uh, sort of holed up, but I was lucky enough to have my son and daughter-in-law and little three-year-old grandson for five weeks, so for us, it was almost like a vacation. It was really great. Oh, amen. I was, yeah. I was grateful to see Reed in the background yeah. and, and to hear Zeke uh, playing during morning prayer oh, yeah. and some of our Bible studies. It was really, it was, uh, fabulous. It was great to see them. So, well, I'm, I'm glad to see you in person. I'm tired yes. of Zoom conversations. Yes. So welcome to, to Christ Church and welcome to the Rose Garden mm. on this great day. Well, friends, we are here um, to talk about stewardship, a critical part of our life, as we all know. And um, uh, a part of our life that is um, that we changed last fall. So, um, Betsy, I wonder why did we make that change from an annual stewardship drive in the fall to the spring? This is it was sort of the end of a of a series of changes that we've been making as we've talked about stewardship. Anybody who knows me knows that I've been talking about stewardship for years. Yes. And uh, we've been trying to get away from the money aspect of it and into the concept of generosity and sharing. Um, the fall is a time when everybody's asking for money and the church is working on its budget. And so it became, the pledge drive became really one of how do we raise money to support the budget for the church. And it really wasn't the spirit of what we wanted to capture. Yeah. And so then we looked at Lent, which is a really beautiful time of um, introspection and thought this would be a great time to really talk about how we work with God through our church and how we can support that. Yeah. And so that was basically the thinking behind it. Yeah. And it was a great change. Yeah. I was oh, yeah. loving how it was rolling out. I loved the, the 28 days of generosity yes. that we were uh, reflecting on together uh, and, and the in, pair, in church conversations that we were starting to yeah. have. And then boom, boom. <laughs> COVID-19. <laughs> everything came to a stop. So we had to shift, of course. Right. We took it from a Lenten journey. Uh, and these last couple of weeks, we've been, uh, it's, it, we've kind of rekindled right. it as part of our Easter uh, pilgrimage as well. Um, and so I wonder for you personally, how, how has stewardship impacted your life over the years? If you think back to when you first came to Christ mm -hmm. Church, or even when you, when you were a young girl in Connecticut, how, how has stewardship transformed right. your life? Well, I'm a, a dyed-in-the-wool Episcopalian, and my dad was on the vestry in New Canaan, so giving to the church was always something important. He was a stewardship captain, so I remember him making calls. In those days, uh, they went to the houses. They were personal calls, mm. um, and it was almost a contest between, uh, they were all gentlemen, uh, making the calls of who was going to, raise the most money so i think in the beginning it really was about raising money even though you knew it was attached to mission work yes um and i would say even my early years here at christ church when i worked on stewardship again it was we've got to get the money for the budget we've got to figure this out and i will say that there was a um a meeting of the stewardship committee i won't name the person who find we were talking about okay if we try this if we try that who slammed his fist on the door on the on the table and said that's not why I'm here mm. that's not why I'm here and all of us who had all been working on stewardship for years spent the next hour and a half talking about why are we here and that was a turning point in my life mm. to say what is stewardship what does it really mean what is the heart and soul of stewardship and not how much money can we raise so how do you answer that question? What is the heart and soul for you? The heart and soul for me is trying to live the life that Jesus set for us and using the church as my way of doing that, mm. doing the programs in the church, the people in the church. Um, you know, I do a lot of things. I'm, I'm on boards, and I've been an AIDS advocate and all sorts of things. And they're all important. Yes. But for me, and again, we, we then went on to call it Christ Church First as our stewardship group. Um, for me, 
I see the church as a way of really reaching out in so many different ways and being effective. And uh, knowing that we were going to talk about generosity today, I went back to 2009 when we pr published, the church published, a book, you may not know about it, and it was called The Gift of Giving. Mm. And we asked parishioners to talk about giving, and we published it. And we have some great pictures of children, drew pictures about why they love their church. And I was reading it, and I want to share something that Lisa McLean wrote, because to me, this is why, why the church, okay? And she wrote, excuse me, I'm going to have to put on my glasses for this. She wrote, the joy in giving is watching God work seeing the supernatural foretelling of his plan and his word through the lives of men and women is worth the price of any gift all the endeavors of man mean nothing compared to the one act of almighty god the joy of giving is being able to say as john did in first john that which we have heard we have seen with our own eyes mm. to see god perform his work with our own eyes is a joy unspeakable to know that he has used me to extend his offer to others is an amazement and a thrill with which nothing else can compare. The Bible calls it the joy of the harvest. This joy is enhanced as God calls us to being his co-worker. Mm. Being his co-worker. That's why first fruits, that's why I put the church first. Beautiful. There was a great phrase in there about seeing his work. Mm -hmm. Where do you see God's work through Christ Church? Whew, everywhere. Um, for me personally, yeah. um, the ability to work at Karsten School, mm. um, the children there and seeing the difference in the children and, and their faces when they see us. Um, that's something that Christ Church has, has set up so that I can do. Yeah. I couldn't do it by myself. Yeah. I'll tell you a cute story. My little boy, LaKenny, um, the second, we, you know, we're all taught how we need to be with children and be yeah. safe with children. And so we don't kiss and hug and whatever. And uh, he, he did, he, he's got a difficult reading problem, but he did something wonderful. And so I said, oh, that's fantastic. And I put out my hand to shake his hand. This is before COVID. Shake his hand, and he kind of looked at me like, what, you know, what is she doing? He's second grade. And I said, oh, oh, I'm being silly. I should have done this, like this. And he said, no. And I said, well, what should I have done? And he just reached out and hugged me. Oh. That's what Christ Church lets me do. Yes. What right a there. beautiful, yeah. Yeah. what a beautiful expression of God at work in the world. Absolutely. And, and that is what we're called to be. Right. I, mean, I love the mission of Christ Church, bringing God and people, people together. together to know and live the good news of Jesus Christ. Right. And there you did it. And LaKenny thanked you. Oh, for what a doll. What a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful gift. And well, so, you know, we're, fe we're now with COVID. I'm so happy that we've been able to at least do this gift of breakfast for the children that can't make it to the school yeah. because the school is where they were getting their food. A exactly. So, you know, those are the things that Christ Church lets me be part of. Amen. And I love it. Yeah. Well, it's a critical place. It's a critical ministry yes. that we are about. Uh, and I can't thank you and all of the, the mm. donors and supporters of Christ Church for making our ministry possible. Uh, we're at this wonderful place in our life. We celebrate uh, Pentecost tomorrow. No. Uh, and, and we've kind of merged it with taking the next step Sunday. Right. Um, and I wonder, do you, what would you, how can we participate? What, what would you like us to do uh, as a response to, to that invitation? The invitation to take the next step? Yeah. Well, I know what I do. Um, over the years, Gaylord and I have increased the amount of our um, gifts to the church as best we could. And um, I've found that it makes me really happy mm. <laughs> to be able to do this. And so when I retired and knew that my life uh, situation was gonna be very different, I kind of set up a system so that right now I, I don't have to take a back, I, I don't have to step back, I can Amen. still move forward. And it makes me really, really happy. I would like everyone to look at their relationship with Christ Church, to look at the gifts that Christ Church gives 
out to the world and I would like them in their hearts to look at what they can do to support that. Mm. Um, we have, you know, I, you know we've had the videos and we talk about each step. Where are you as a person and where do you want to be? And then how can you get there? Yeah. And so that's what Gail and I had to do when I retired. It's like, whoa, there's going to be a big difference in our income. How can we, in our case, stay where we were? Because we got to a good place. Mm -hmm. And we worked at it to figure yeah. out how we were going to do that. Amen. And I work at it every year because we all know what's happened to 401ks and everything else. Yeah. But I don't want to let go of my journey. I don't want to step back. And so I would ask people to look where they are, mm -hmm. where they want to be, and then walk it. A amen. Simple. Yeah. Well, friends, I hope, um, and I, I pray as well, that you can join us as we together take the next step in our generosity in Christ. Wherever you may be, if you are at the beginning stages of your, gen uh, of your giving to Christ Church and uh, to God through Christ Church, take the step of making a commitment. Complete the estimate of giving uh, card that you receive electronically and make a commitment of a gift to Christ Church. If you're already giving, how can that increase? How is God inviting you to increase your generosity in reflection of God's generosity to you? And if you are already centered on Christ, tithing or giving more than a tithe, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do what you can to maintain that. And if you can increase your gift, fantastic. Yes. But thank you for the gift that you are giving. Uh, friends, we have over 500 households at Christ Church. We would love to see over 500 commitments, whatever that commitment may be, that we can have 100% participation in taking the next step in our generosity to God together. Friends, thanks for joining us today. It's great to be with you, uh, Thank Betsy. You, thanks for coming out on okay, this day. Okay, and I want to hear from all you people. You, you, you turn in your estimate cards and let us get um, all the fuel that we need to do the work that we want to do. Amen. Thanks, Betsy. You're welcome.